What is up guys, welcome back today to another video on this channel, hope you're all doing amazing and fantastic. In this video we're going to be talking about the story of the brightest witch of her age, Hermione Granger. She's one of the golden trio and she's been an important part of the entire Harry Potter series. There's a lot to go on on her personality from the book so I'll try to keep this video as brief as I can. With that being said, let's dive deep into the life of Hermione Granger. Before we jump into the video, it takes a long time to make these videos and to come up with scripts for these videos, so it's super appreciated if you take the time out to subscribe. With that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So, J.K. Rowling has expressed in many different interviews that out of all the three of the Golden Trio, she's closest to one of them. Not Harry, not Ron, but rather Hermione Granger. J.K. Rowling says that she's basically an exaggeration of me, so she did come from a special place. And again, after rereading the Harry Potter series, I've been making a few videos on the subject. Most of my previous videos have been on the Harry Potter topic. So I have done some research for this video and found out some pieces of information of Hermione Granger's life before she came to Hogwarts. So let's jump right into it. With all the emotion and backstories that J.K. Rowling put into the characters, she put the most emotion into Hermione because it was her way of introducing herself into this magical world that she had created. After I made an analysis on Severus Snape, Hermione Granger was the next character who instantly popped into my mind. She is one of my and many other fans' favorite character. She's witty, smart and has gotten Harry and Ron out of so many tight spots. It's true in saying that they would be nowhere without her, Harry would be dead. Straight up, I'm just saying it. Hermione was born to Mr. and Mrs. Granger, who remained unnamed in the books, both of whom were muggles and dentists. So Hermione naturally became a muggle-born, and she faced lots of scrutiny from most of the Slytherins over off in Hogwarts, who saw her as a mudblood. As we know, in the Harry Potter universe, mudbloods are treated the worst way. So that's how Crab, Goyle and Malfoy used to treat her, calling her the mudblood half of the time, and it was always insulting, but she never cared. She's Hermione Granger. So her parents chose the name Hermione for two reasons. One, they wanted to show the exceptional name, that unique name, because it was derived from Shakespeare. And second, they knew that her, their daughter was going to be something amazing. So they wanted that to be shown in her name. So when she was young, weird things used to happen around all her, which no one could explain. And obviously that happens to all witches and wizards of certain ages when they start discovering and experimenting with their magic without actually knowing that they are doing so. So for a long time she attended muggle school and she was brilliant over there as well. She's Hermione Granger, how can she not be brilliant? So according to some of the research I did, um, a person from Hogwarts came to tell her, most probably Professor McGonagall, that she was a witch and she was chosen because she had enough magic to be counted as a witch because there are many muggle-borns who do have a trace of magic from long past generations but it's just not enough for them to use that into a wand, channel their energy into a wand and come to study the magical art at Hogwarts so they are left untouched. So she was called into Hogwarts and her parents were given the directions to go to Diagon Alley so that they could buy her first books and everything that she required to go to Hogwarts. When they went through Diagon Alley to get all of her books, she got her first glimpse of the wizarding world and it fascinated her. Obviously, like imagine you going into the wizarding world now. No matter how much you've heard about it, you will get fascinated by it. So she quickly grabbed all the books she required for her semester, plus so many extra books and memorized so many spells and ward movements that by a very young age, she had basically mastered the art of the wand. So it takes a long time for people to channel their energy through a wand, yet she had done it as easily as possible. She and her parents often used to go camping to the Forest of Dean, which gets a mention all the way in Deathly Hallows, when Hermione apparates with Harry into a forest and he asks where it is, so she says, Forest of Dean, me and my parents used to come camping here sometimes. While looking for Neville Longbottom's toad on the Hogwarts Express, she ran into an apartment where she met two young boys, Ron Weasley and Harry Potter. Ron had already noticed Harry and immediately became friends with him. Hermione then showed up to Harry and Ron and found them both kind of obnoxious. Though she did obviously like revere Harry like the rest of the world. And that was where their journey began. When she went into Hogwarts, the Sorting Hat quite deeply considered putting her into Ravenclaw because of her massive intellect. But then he decided that 
her bravery is much more than her intellect and imagine Hermione Granger's intellect is so massive imagine the sorting hat choosing her because her bravery was even more she was thrown into Gryffindor along with Ron and Harry Potter so throughout the first year she found them to be annoying obnoxious and rule breaking one night she caught them sneaking off to duel Malfoy she tried to stop them and at some point she actually said the words you're going to get us killed or worse expelled so she didn't worry about dying she worried about getting expelled from the hogwarts school of witchcraft and wizard which is hilarious because nothing's worse than death i saw me told them out no there are lots of things worse than death dumbledore said that however on halloween when professor quirrell brought the troll into the school hermione was in the girls cubicle in the washroom harry and ron went to save her and they did they knocked out the troll and when questioned by professor mcgonagall she said that she was there and she was trying to fight the troll and they saved her so she told a lie to a teacher something which you can never expect from her mining ranger that showed that her attitude had changed towards them during a quidditch match when she thought that snape was the one jinxing harry's broomstick to make him fall off she went and quietly put on fire snape's robes and that distracted quirrell who was actually casting the spell over the next 7 years these three were inseparable Ron, Harry and Hermione were the closest friends and even in Cursed Child if you include that Draco Malfoy said that he was forever jealous of their friendship because it was so strong. Hermione's parents even trusted the Weasleys enough to send her over for the holidays to stay with the Weasleys for weeks, months and so long on end that I can't even imagine did they ever even meet the Weasleys or did they just take Hermione's word for it. In their second year it was Hermione who helped them solve the case of the basilisk. using her clues even though she was paralyzed she helped them using her written clues to figure out that there's a basilisk and that's what's paralyzing students yet they also figured out by looking at the mirror in her hand that none of the students died because they all saw the basilisk in different ways colin creevy saw the basilisk because he clicked a photograph of it and she saw it in the mirror so it wasn't a direct eye contact but it still rendered them paralyzed they were all sorted out by the mandrake juice obviously no one died in that incident in their third year students could choose what they could put into their timetables ron and harry chose a select number of subjects which they could study but her mind he ended up choosing so many different subjects that they couldn't fit it into her timetable it was at this point that professor mcgonagall gave her mind a time turner told her not to tell a single word about it to anyone not even harry and ron now after reading cursed child unfortunately I realize that time turners are extremely dangerous for a few reasons. One, you can change time drastically. It's a regular fact of time that if you go back in time and change something, it has horrible impacts upon the future. It might not if the detail is extremely insignificant, but you never know because they tried to stop Cedric winning the Triwizard Tournament so that he wouldn't die. So they just expected him to be alive and have a future, but it changed the whole future in different ways. In Cursed Child, I'm not giving much more away. That was the details. So another thing, according to magical law of physics, you cannot go back in time more than five hours without changing anything else. So that could have been a very clear indication that McGonagall obviously didn't expect her to go back in time five hours because she was just supposed to be using it for her subjects. So let's say she was taking arithmancy at one point and she had to attend divination at the same point. So she would attend the whole class of arithmancy, walk away and rewind time and go and attend her divination class. So there were two Hermiones in that reality. Now a little confusion I had while reading this book was after she completes her divination, what happens? Like she's still in the past, so does she refocus herself to the future? That's probably what used to happen but it was still pretty confusing to imagine what if they bumped into each other. Again I said insignificant details could still make a big change. In their fourth year during the Triwizard Tournament it was Hermione who helped Harry try to figure out a way to get her, his firebolt all the way from the castle into the ground so that he could battle against the dragon. So he used the Accio the summoning spell and it was Hermione who coached him nightly to try and do that. Ron and Hermione used to even help him prepare for the third task in which he had to use, you know, offensive spells like stupefaction or the impediment touchings which pushes you backwards or the expelliarmus all these different kinds of spells. And she gave him so much knowledge it's just 
I cannot comprehend how much she helped both of them throughout the years though you have to respect something about Hermione that she always helped them with their homework never let them copy she wanted them to learn not to just copy and complete their work from her so simple interesting things about Hermione that I came to know while researching for this video in their fifth year Order of the Phoenix, it was her idea to start the Dumbledore's army. Harry was completely reluctant at first, but then he realized that he had to break Dolores Umbridge's horrible teaching methods and do something about defense against the Dark Arts. So it was Hermione who decided to take the initiative for Dumbledore's army, and she was the one who helped Harry get the entire team together, who in the end helped him find the Diadem of Ravenclaw to finally defeat Tom Riddle. It was Hermione who came up with the method of communicating through galleons so that they could like test fix the date and Harry could fix the date, it would change the date on everyone's coin and everyone could just come. The only danger with that was they don't accidentally spend them. And in the end she was one of the people who came with Harry to the Order of the Phoenix. That has to be said because Harry trusted Ron and Hermione the most and she was also the one to come up with the plan to get Dolores Umbridge stuck with the centaurs. She was the one who took them into the Forbidden Forest in the hopes that the centaurs won't harm them and Grop could make some kind of appearance. In their sixth year, however, Half-Blood Prince, she was extremely skeptical about the book and put her heart and soul into researching who the Half-Blood Prince could be. And she came this close to finding about who it could be. If you watched my previous video, you know Eileen Prince was the mother of Severus Snape. And she found out that Eileen Prince was once an exceptional potion student at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. She, she was pretty close to finding out who the half-blood prince was if she had just gone one step further to find out who she married, who was a muggle, that would make their child half-blood. In the end, while Harry and Dumbledore were over off in the cave, it was Hermione and Ron who were leading the mission over off in Hogwarts because Harry had told them Draco Malfoy will 100% try something and he did. They were the ones who called Professor Snape and immediately he ran, though we all know what he ran to do, he ran to kill Dumbledore. But anyways, they were active during that time as well. Hermione Granger was an essential part of all of their adventures. Harry and Ron just wouldn't have survived. In their seventh year, Hermione made a huge sacrifice. While she came to stay with the Weasleys, no one knew up till a certain point in a book what she had done. She told Harry with tears in her eyes that she had obliviated her parents. She had given them new identities and made them think that their uh, life's ambition was to go to Australia and that's what they had done. So she made her parents go off to Australia. She said that if she sur survives, she'll go there and lift the enchantment. But if she won't survive, at least they'll be happy enough and Lord Voldemort won't be able to track them down. She also said that she altered their memories so that they would not remember her. Imagine doing something like that. You make your parents forget you. All their memories with you, all the love for you just washed away in a single spell. She made that big of a sacrifice. Sacrificed her parents to go with Harry and Ron to drop down Lord Voldemort from his high position. That was a sacrifice she made in the seventh book and it was something amazing. She was crying at that point and she just told Harry that her parents don't know that they have a daughter, you see. I also want, I also want to emphasize on the pain the Grangers must have felt after the enchantment was lifted, coming to know that they haven't seen their own daughter for months on end and they had to send her away to a magical school for which they had no idea how protective it will be and whether their daughter is even safe at all. They threw her into a world where they couldn't take care of her, trusting so many other people to do so. Overall, Hermione, Harry and Ron were the golden trio, but I must say, Ron, Harry are the two heroes, but the brains was all Hermione. And let's not forget, Hermione had her brave parts as well. She wasn't all brain. She wasn't a nerd. She was pretty good at fighting. She knew all the protective spells, all the offensive spells, and even the most dangerous ways to destroy Horcruxes. Over and all, she was an amazing character, one of the best characters in this book. I think probably second only to Harry Potter. She has one of the most elaborate backstories given and her character is the most deeply described. Ron's character is pretty challenged at many points saying that he ran out of them and he was a coward. 
Though I don't really want to get into that because it's a pretty controversial topic so as to whether Ron did right in his life or was he like a completely unnecessary character. Because in the movies, Ron is certainly a sidelined character, whereas Harry and Hermione are brought to the spotlight. Anyways, to wrap this up, Hermione and Ron got married and had two children, Rose and Hugo Granger Weasley. That said, Hermione kept her maiden name Granger and their children were called Granger Weasley. And her biggest achievement, after defeating Lord Voldemort and going on the most powerful quest, she got her own chocolate frog card. There's no higher position than that. You know, the chocolate frogs where all the celebrities get their cards along with a packet of chocolate frogs. She got her own chocolate frog card. And she then joined the Ministry of Magic along with Harry Potter and Harry Potter became the head of the Order Office and she became the Minister for Magic living happily ever after with Ron and two of her children. On that note, I wrapped up this short video about Hermione Granger. It was an amazing experience researching about this character. It's super interesting to dig deep into a character's past. Thank you so much for watching this video and I am gonna see you guys next time. This is my holidays, these are the Easter holidays going on. I have to return to Hogwarts in a while. So yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna make videos there. These cameras bug out. <laughs> Goodbye guys.